Hello everyone. Hope you are doing well. Every now and then, many of us search for images that can, with a little artistic twist, really liven up our social media posts, presentations, blogs, websites, and documents. The images that you are seeing on the screen have been created with just a few seconds of work using filters available in the free and open source image editing software called GIMP. These filters open up a new vista to let your creativity fly and help you produce some amazing images that can wow your audience. My name is Chinmay and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how we can create these and many other interesting images by applying filters to pictures that have either been downloaded from the net or clicked by us. Before we start, I would like to quickly mention that GIMP is available for free from GIMP.org. It's available for Linux, Mac OS and Windows. Just click on the orange button and download and install GIMP. If you already have GIMP, you're all set. I will be using some images in this tutorial and I have given links to those images in the description. You can download these images or use some of your own to follow along. Let's now head to GIMP and start. So I'm inside GIMP now and I have a few images right here. So you can bring them all one by one. Just grab hold of an image and drop it here and work on that one particular image. Or otherwise, if you want to work with a bunch of images, you can just simply select all of them. Click on the first one, press shift and click on the last one. And then just simply grab them and drop them in the image canvas, just like this here. And for some of these images, you might be asked this question to convert or keep. You can just press convert. And you will have all your images opened up in different views. So this saves you a little time. So the choice of working independently on each image or bringing more than one images at one go is entirely yours. You can make that call. In this particular case, I've just brought in four images because I want to demonstrate four filter effects. So once these images are in, let us work on the first image. And I'm pressing Control Shift J to make sure that this image occupies the entire window and is sufficiently enlarged for us to see. Now to apply filters to an image is very simple. Just come to filters and here you will see a large number of categories of filters. And inside each categories, there are quite a few filters that you can actually use. In some cases, you might even find that there are subcategories and then filters inside each of these subcategories. So what I'm going to do now is to just come here and show you some filters from many of these categories such that you have an idea and you can then explore this yourself. Let's start with blur. So I'm just clicking on filter and then coming on blur. You have quite a few blur filters here. So let's start with the first one. The first one is focus blur and this will show you how filters work and you can then explore other filters yourself. Just click on focus blur filter, for example. So it just simply opens up a small dialogue right here. And what you can do is you can just simply bring this into the center and then expand these handles to cover the area that you want in focus. Everything else will be in a blur. So I'm going to just come here and handle this and then you can come to the center of this and adjust this further. So I'm just concentrating on the rider and the idea here is, as you can see, the rider will be in focus. Everything else will be blurred. How much blur is needed that you can control using this control here? By default, it is 25. So you can reduce it or increase it. Every filter has these controls here. So you can play around with them till such time that you are happy with your image. Opacity here tells you the effect of the filter. So if you pull it all the way down to zero, the filter effect will disappear. If you pull it all the way back to 100, the effect of the filter will come back in full force. And if you want something in between, you can move this somewhere in between. If at any point you feel that you want to go back to the default, you can always click on reset. 
So you are back again to the default and you can start working once again. So we can come back here and just bring the rider in focus as we were trying to do before. And then all you need to do is to just come here and click on OK. Just make sure that the preview checkbox is on such that the effect of the filter is visible to you. So just come here and click on OK and you are done. This is the image that has been created by the filter. As you can see, everything is blurred and the rider is in sharp focus. You can then just simply go ahead and click on File, Export As, and then just go ahead and choose a folder. So I've created a new folder called as New Images, and I'm going to export this and save it inside that folder. All the images that I will be working on in this tutorial, I will keep saving there such that we can have a look at them later on. So just go ahead and click on export and hit export one more time. So when you open this folder, you will see your filtered image and you can click on it and see it inside a photo viewer. So that's all it takes to apply a filter and have a new image. So let's head back and have a look at some other filters. So I'm going to stick with this biker photo and I'm going to press Ctrl Z to undo the effect of this filter. And let me show you a few other filters. Let's go back to filters, blur, and you will see that there are quite a few motion blurs here. If the subject is coming towards you, one good filter to apply is zoom motion. So as this biker is moving forward, I can create a motion blur effect. I can give a speed effect to this particular photograph. Just click on motion blur. And by default, you can see that we have introduced an element of speed everything is rushing so this is a really great effect if you want to provide this kind of an effect the effect of motion so you can just go ahead and accept the defaults otherwise you can just play around with these controls right here so you can have a different kind of effect the amount of blurring is controlled using this particular slider i've already told you about opacity and if you're not happy with the changes you have made you can always click on reset and you can then go ahead and click on OK. Then you can go ahead to File and save this by Export As. And then going ahead and choosing a name. So I will come here and give it a different name. Zoom 1. And then go ahead and press Export. And export this image. So once you go and have a look, you will find that this is the second image that you have now, which has an element of motion, forward motion, that has been introduced. Notice that the filter has been applied to the entire image. So the ground is moving, the bike is moving. There are many times when we want only one element of the photo to receive the effect of the filter. For example, in this case, one alternative approach could be that we wanted to see only the bike in motion and everything else as it was. So we can do that quite easily. And I'm going to press Ctrl Z to revert back to the original image. You can always make a copy of this image by right clicking and then creating a duplicate layer such that if something goes wrong, you can always revert back to your original image. So in this particular case, if you want the effect of the filter to be restricted to only one part of the photograph, all you need to do is to come here and click on this free select tool and the keyboard shortcut is F. So if you were to press F, you would select the free select tool right here. And then just keeping your left mouse button depressed, all you need to do is to just draw around the subject of interest. If you make an error, you can always do backspace and then start all over again. So try to stick as close as possible to the figure. And as you can see, I can move very quickly. The left mouse button is depressed and I'm drawing an outline around the object of interest just as I would draw using pen and paper. So I'm just keeping my left mouse button depressed and very quickly going around the entire outline of this particular bike rider. And when I reach the end, you will see that I have a yellow dot meeting the starting point. And then all you need to do is to just double click on it and you have this area selected. So this is like putting a fence and telling filters to restrict the effect only to this particular area, the selected area. So we are going to go back again, 
go to blur and choose zoom motion blur but this time around you will see that the blur effect is just simply contained inside the area that we have selected and everything else is exactly the same that is the zoom blur effect has not been applied to the remaining part of the image so i'm going to go ahead and click on ok and then i will come to select and click on none and then we can go ahead and export this so i can give this a name as zoom 2 and click on export and export once again so we have this picture here let's see it inside the photo viewer so you can see that this picture is having motion applied only to one part of the image and not to the entire image now every picture will have a very different effect so this is something that i just wanted to show you what you are seeing on this picture in terms of the zoom blur effect could be quite different on another picture so say for example we have this picture here the elements on this picture are different because we have quite a few people biking this is a cycle race as you can see so let me just press Control shift j to enlarge this image and let's go and apply the exact same filter here so you will see that this effect is a little bit different from the previous photograph because the number of elements here are quite different so the effect itself can vary and then you can just simply come here and adjust it according to your preference and then just go ahead and save this particular image now moving on sometimes we have motion in a different direction say for example in this particular case the train here is actually moving from left to right and it's not really coming towards you so what you can do is you can choose a different kind of blur filter come to filter blur and you can choose a linear motion blur filter the principle is exactly the same and you can control the blur by using this length slider here and as you can see the blur is being applied to the entire photograph you can also manipulate the length here by increasing the distance between these two plus signs or reducing the distance between these two plus signs and also the direction you can move it onto the opposite side and have this horizontal blur in a different direction you can press reset to revert back to the original blur so you can toy around with these i'm just going to reset this once again we don't want the entire photograph to be impacted by the operation of the linear motion blur filter so what we can do is we can come here and pick up our tool like we did before and just go ahead and draw a quick outline around this train so the effect of the blur can then be confined to just this particular part of the image go as close as possible to the area of interest i'm doing this very quickly when you come to the starting point just double click so the object of interest will be selected and then you can come here and click on blur and click on linear motion blur and then just put in an appropriate value so this is just hit and trial so you can just keep experimenting with this so let me try to increase this and see if i can introduce a reasonable effect of motion on the train object here so this seems to be quite okay i'm able to see the train yet the train is in motion so i can come here and click on this and you will see that the linear motion blur effect has been applied only to the area that is inside this selection fence everything else is in perfect focus and i can just come here and remove this boundary and then go ahead and save this image export as finally sometimes the motion is in circular dimension so if you have a photograph where something is moving in a circular pattern you can apply the circular motion blur filter so let's just crop this and make this a little enlarged so i'm just coming here using the crop tool and then pressing enter and then just simply doing control shift j to enlarge this particular part of the image so as you can see this is a windmill and this is moving in a circular direction if we wanted to apply a circular motion or to give a circular motion to this picture we can adopt the exact same technique we don't want everything else to be out of focus we can just come here and click on the free select tool draw a rough boundary around this particular part of the picture that is the windmill part of the picture 
the veins and as you come to the end just double click to select this particular area we can now go to filter and we can go to blur and we can now choose circular motion blur so when we click on this you will see that a circular motion effect has been applied to just this part of the picture and we are now able to show that this particular thing is moving even though in the photograph this was not the case so you can just play around with this and also change the angle to see what works best for you just go ahead and click on ok we can remove the selection by going to select and choosing none and then just simply go ahead and export this picture and save it so click on export export once again and we have this picture saved when we go and visit this folder where we are saving all these filtered images you will see that this picture appears quite nicely in the photo viewer so this is how you can use some blur filters you can try some other filters here and see what works best for you you may be able to discover something really nice with the other filters as well So let's now explore another set of filters. I have a fresh set of images here and I've just grabbed them and dropped them inside the canvas as I have done before. So all three of them are available here. Now we're going to explore the enhance category and see some filters inside the enhance category. This works quite well for photographs that you have taken and some of these filters can reduce noise and maybe sharpen the image so let's see one effect that is very commonly seen when you take pictures in flashlight so if we can just press ctrl shift and j this is called as the red eye and you can easily remove this just come to filters go to the enhance category and there is a direct filter called as red eye removal just click on it and boom it's gone so you can play around with the threshold value and opacity but if your work is done you can just go ahead and click on ok and then just go ahead and export this image from here and your job is done so you can remove red eyes quite easily using the filter enhance and the red eye removal filter moving on many times we take pictures and they are not sharp enough so we can sharpen pictures usually this is the case with most pictures so we have a close up picture of a flower here so you can come to filters and then go to enhance and this time around we are going to use a filter called as high pass filter but before we can use this filter we will need to make a copy of this image this is always a good practice right click and duplicate this layer such that if something goes wrong you can always revert back to your original image and you don't have to load it again one more time in this particular case we definitely need this layer it's not a matter of option so we have a copy we'll click on this copy we'll be working on this copy these are two exact copies one on top of each other so we can now go to filters and go to enhance and we can choose this high pass filter so when you click on this you will see this image turning gray and you can then work with this standard deviation slider so as you move this slider from the left to the right more and more linear features lines for example will become visible on this particular image so you'll have to strike a balance so i'm just moving forward and as you can see as i increase this standard deviation slider more and more lines are becoming visible so you don't want to be very excessive so let's say if we can move up to something about 69 you have these lines here that you can see in gray and you will have to just play around with this to make sure that you have a sufficient number of lines that you want to sharpen in this particular case uh, you can see that i have selected something close to about 69 in some other photographs you may have to go a little forward or a little behind but once you are happy just go ahead and click on ok so after you've pressed OK, you are not going to see anything, but you will have to come here to this mode option here and change this normal to overlay. So when you come here and click on overlay, you will see a much sharper picture here. And if we can just switch the, the top layer off, you can see the difference. 
this was our original picture and this is the sharpened picture as you can see the contrast is much higher and the image is now exposing much more detail so if this works for you you can then just simply go ahead and go to file and export this picture and then just go ahead and save it export and export if you are not comfortable with multiple layers you can always right click and merge these layers down and all the layers get merged into a single layer by this technique and then you can go ahead and save it it is the exact same thing as far as saving is concerned or exporting is concerned i'm pressing ctrl z to get back our original two layers if you save it in this condition you're going to get the exact same photograph let me show you one final filter here and you can experiment with the others this is a picture of a forest road and we can sharpen this picture and this time around we will come here and create a duplicate layer such that if something goes wrong we have our original layer right here this does not impact the original photograph in the folder till such time that you overwrite that image but just for precaution we try to create a duplicate image so we'll come here to filters and go to enhance and this time around instead of using high pass we can come here and choose sharpen so the effect of this filter is a little subtle but we'll be able to see this you can alter the amount of effect using two things one is radius so when you increase this the radius of the filter becomes higher or lower and the second important one is the amount so when you increase and decrease the amount slider you can see the effect of sharpening right here so you'll have to strike a balance it should not be too excessive and once you're happy you can just go ahead and click on ok so here you have your sharpened picture and let's compare it with the original so this is the sharpened picture and i'm going to switch this off and you can see this is the original this is the sharpened picture so much more detail is exposed here so if this is what you wanted to do you can sharpen all your pictures inside gimp just bring them inside and come to filters enhance and then choose the sharpen unmask filter so we can go ahead and save this file export as and hit export one more time so that picture has now been saved so this is how you can enhance your photographs by using some of these filters there are filters for noise reduction and you can try some other filters in the enhance category as well so let's now look at some other filters i have three fresh images fairy tales sailboats and waterfall and i have just dragged and dropped all three images here so i have these images inside gimp if you want you can use them one by one that's entirely up to you and these images have been opened in different views they are not in the same view so if you drag and drop a bunch of images they open up in a different view so let's head to filters and this time around we are just going to explore a few filters from the distorts category and here there are quite a few filters which you can try and i'm going to show you just a few let's start with page curl so this is one effect that is quite popular so it comes up with a small dialog asking you on which side of the picture do you want the curl do you want it on the upper left upper right lower left lower right the default is lower right so i'm going to leave it just like that and the curl orientation can be vertical or horizontal you can experiment with these later on and of course this is opacity so what we're going to do now is we are just going to go ahead and click on ok so when we do that you will see this particular curl now the color of this curl is dependent on the foreground and background colors that have been chosen in your swatch at the time when this filter was run so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come here and change my color and then show this to you once again so i'm pressing ctrl z and reverting back to the original picture and coming here i'm going to double click on this and try to revert back to a grayish kind of a color let me choose 777777 it's a little dark gray color you can pick it up from here as well so you can just come here and click on this so the foreground color is now 
dark gray and the background color is white and we can then head to filters distorts and then go here and choose page curl which is right at the very end and the small dialog is going to appear i am not going to change anything on this dialog i am just going to go ahead and click on okay and you will see that a new color based on the foreground and background color that we have chosen has now been implemented on the curl and you can see here that it has created a new layer called as the curl layer so if you switch this off you will see that that part of the image underneath on the original picture has been wiped away and the curl part has been brought on top and if you were to just switch off the picture from below you can see this particular effect both the layers together give this kind of an effect so once you are done with this you can come and export this so i'm going to go ahead and click on export as reach your folder where we have been saving all these images and i'm going to go ahead and click on export so this image has been saved and when you click on it you can view it inside your photo viewer just like we have seen other images so this is the page curl effect let me now show you a few other effects quickly so i have another picture here waterfall and i'm going to go to filters distorts and come here and click on polar coordinates this is an interesting filter so when you do this you will find that the picture has been converted into a circular picture as if you are viewing the earth from the top that is on the pole and here you have a few choices so this circle depth in percent when it is at 100% it's a nice circle as you start moving this slider towards the left that is towards zero the shape then starts converting gradually into a rectangle and you'll have to give it a little time for the filter to redraw this entire effect once again so depending upon your choice you can choose the shape i am bringing it back to the circle that is 100% there's also this offset angle. So if you look at this wheel, you can grab hold of this edge and then just move it to see this from another angle if that appears better to you. So you can try to look at this entire thing from a different angle. So these are the two options that you can choose. I'm going to reset this and go with the defaults. And once you are done with this, you can just simply go ahead and click on OK and then go and export this once again and i'm going to go ahead with jpg but then if you wanted to save it in some other format two other popular formats being png all you need to do is to just replace the jpg after the dot with png or otherwise you can also choose to have it in the web p format this is a popular format so in this case i'm going to go ahead with png because there is transparency on this layer and whenever i am putting it on a slide I would much prefer to have the background showing from the sides and go ahead and save this as waterfall.png and export. So when that's done, you will see this picture right here and you can see that it has been nicely saved and we are viewing it in the photo viewer of Microsoft Windows 11. So this is an interesting effect. I'm going to come and press Ctrl Z to revert back to my original image and let me show you just a few more from distorts. You can explore the other ones later on. One other one is Newsprint. So this Newsprint immediately tries to create a picture that is reminiscent of a newspaper. By default, it is black and white, but you can choose to see it in color where you can individually manipulate red, green, and blue colors making up this particular image here. But uh, two other important ones are pattern so this is currently line pattern as you zoom in you will see that this new sprint effect is being created using lines but what you can also do is to choose circles so this will then become dots as you would see in many newspapers and you can also choose diamond or any other crossing lines etc so these are the choices that you can make let me revert this back to line and the period slider actually increases the gap between the lines or the dots the one that you have chosen here so you can you know choose to increase the gap between the lines or the dots and 
you can of course view this from a different angle under which circumstances the line direction is going to change so if i am viewing it from this angle this is the direction of the line as you can see and if i turn it around a few degrees then this is the direction of the line that is now creating this particular picture so these are some of the things that you can try here i'm going to reset this and then you can just go ahead and click on ok and then go ahead and export this particular picture so this is new sprint effect finally just wanted to show you a few more so come to filters and go to distorts we are still exploring the distorts category so i'm going to come here and choose mosaic and click on this so this creates a tiled kind of a pattern and the tile geometry here is hexagon and you can alter the tile size so if you click on this and drag it a little further you will see hexagons becoming bigger or smaller depending on how you are moving your slider if you move it towards zero that is towards the left the tile size will become smaller and you have a really nice picture here that is giving you the tile effect you can choose to have a different shape for example you can have triangles and so this picture will be constituted using triangular tiles or otherwise you can have uh, squares so it will try to approximate squares and also octagons and so on and so forth i'm happy with this so i'm just going to go ahead and click on this and then just simply export this so coming to my folder and just calling this tiles export hit export one more time if we go to our folder and click on this you can see this inside the viewer and as you can see it's a beautiful image which can be used as a background for a coat or whatever else so it's an interesting effect this mosaic effect let me press ctrl z so you can explore the other options here and some of these are very straightforward you can spherize this or otherwise filter distorts and you can create waves so something like this so you can also have ripple or shift or any other thing and then just simply go ahead and save this particular picture so this is the distorts category which has quite a few filters i've shown you a few and you can explore the others later on so let's now have a look at a couple of filters in the light and shadow category you can experiment with the others later on the first filter that i want to show you is lighting effects so when you click on this you will see a small dialog and this is the preview window it's a ray of light that is falling on one part of the photograph and you will notice that there is a little blue dot here so there are quite a few settings that you can change and experiment with so you can increase or decrease the distance in this particular case the default is 0 0.250 so if we increase this or decrease this you will notice in this preview picture the light beam changes quite significantly in its focus or area that it is covering so let's get it back to uh, 0 0.250 the default value so it's here and you can also catch hold of this particular blue dot and move it around to have a different angle to this light uh, these are some of the options that are available from the light tab and these are the defaults so there are quite a few sources of light that you can choose from i'm going with the first source of light light one and the position is minus one minus one one and the same over here and the intensity is one there are other options also but we will not do much with this for example the material option has nothing much to do with the light itself but how light is reflected on the surface so you can control the glowing or the brightness or shininess of the reflected light from here so quite a few settings here if we just go with the default we can come here and have a look at what this would produce so it creates an effect like this it is shining a little light on one of the boats if i can just undo this and go back again to filters light and shadow and open this up one more time so what i can do is if i wanted to target a particular section like this boat i can then start moving this dot here the blue dot and then try to bring it 
onto this particular boat right here. So this is another effect that you can create. You can also alter the distance and make sure that it is close or far away as you wish it to be. And then just go ahead and click on OK. So you can shine this particular ray of light on certain objects using the lights and shadows filter effect. So this is lights and shadow and lighting effect. And there are quite a few parameters to choose from. Just make sure that you have taken a note of all the default values such that in the event that you are not in a position to get back to your default value, you can then just type in those values right here and go back. So in this particular case, this was 0 0.250, the default. And you can see that this has an additive effect. So I've already run it once. And if I'm doing it one more time, it adds to what you have done before. So I have not really undone what I did before. So you can keep adding beams of light on other boats or any other object on the image. So this is an interesting filter to explore. Let me also show you one more filter called as sparkle. So this just adds a few sparkling points on the image and you have a lot of things that you can control. I'm going with the default ones just to show you what this sparkle filter does. So when you click on this, you will see that it adds a few sparkles on the picture. And once again, control Z. And if I was to come back here again and go to light and shadows and click on sparkle, I can add more sparkle points. For example, the default was four, I can put in eight. I can reduce or increase the sparkle length. I can increase the flare intensity or decrease the flare intensity, et cetera, et cetera. So if I can come here and click on this, you will see that more sparkle points have now been added. So in this way, you can add and position sparkle points on a particular image. So this is from the light and shadow category. And there are other effects also, say for example, Viginet. So you can create a Viginet here and then just shape this ellipse to the area that you wish to focus. You can grab hold of the entire thing as well and just position it as you would want. And then you can create a Viginet effect right here. So this is how you can use the filters inside light and shadows and you can try some of the other ones as well. So let's now explore one other category. I have an image here that I have just grabbed and dropped inside GIMP. And you can press Ctrl Shift J to fit this image to the image canvas window. And let's go to filters and this time we are going to go ahead and click on combine. And we are going to come here and click on film strip. So when you click on film strip, you will see a small dialogue right here. And one of these options is fit height to images. So we're going to leave everything as it is. And you can change this number. And this is what will be printed on the image. So if you have a preference for a special kind of number, you can do that. And you can come here and click on fit height to images. There's also an advanced tab where you can choose what kind of height and spacing and whole offset you want, the height of the holes, etc. So I'm not going to touch this, but you can explore this coming back to selection and not altering anything at all. And then just simply coming here and clicking on to OK. So when you do this, you'll find that there's a nice film strip effect that has been added here. So as you can see, this one is coming from here. So if you were to choose another number, that number would be printed here. Also notice that the original image is intact and it has added a new image into GIMP. And we can then just simply go to file and export as and then go to our new images folder and come here, give it a name. So I'm just calling it combine export and hit export one more time and your image is saved. So when we open our new images folder, you will see that this image is now present inside the folder and we can double click on it to open it inside the photo viewer. And you can see that a very nice image with a film strip effect has been created. So this is the film strip filter available from the combine category and the film strip filter.
So let's now look at a few other filters. I'm going to pick up this image and drop it here, boy jumping. And click on convert to bring it inside GIMP. Control Shift J to fill the image canvas with the image. And this time around, I'm going to come here and click on filters and artistic. The category is artistic, so there are quite a few filters here. Let me just show you a few of them. One of the good filters here is water pixels. So if we click on this, you will see that even with the default settings, the image is transformed into a very nice looking water painting. So you can just work with some of these values right here and try out if they work better for you. After you make every change, you will have to give the filter a little time to present a new image to you. So you can have a look at what suits you best. If things are not working out for you, you can come back and click on reset. So once you are done, you can just come here and click on OK and then go ahead and export this and save it inside your folder. In this particular case, we are saving all our images inside the new images folder that I have created. So just go ahead and click on export and hit export one more time. And that image will be inside the folder. So when you go to that particular folder, you will see this boy jumping image, the water pixel image. And you can see that this is the water pixel version of the image that we had started with. So this is one of the filters. I'm pressing Ctrl Z to revert back to the original image. Then I'm going back to filters and going back to artistic. And this time around, we're going to have a look at one other filter, and that is glass style. So you can come and click on glass style. And this gives an effect of the picture being behind a translucent glass window. And you can change the tile width and the tile height using these sliders and then you can also go ahead and work using the opacity so whenever you are done you have a interesting image in front of you it's almost as if you are looking through a glass window and you can then just simply go ahead and export that particular image as well we'll have a look at one more filter here so go to filters and go to artistic and this time we are going to have a look at cubism. So this is another interesting creation. So this is just trying to fill the image with cubes. And you can use the tile size option to increase or decrease the cubes till such time that you are happy with it. So once you are done, we can press OK and go ahead and export. So there are quite a few filters in Artistic that you can try. And I'm going to leave it right here, but then you can try to have a look at photocopy, olify, soft glow, and so on and so forth. So quite a few filters that you can try here in the artistic category. Now we'll just try to have a look at decor. There are a few useful things here, one of which is old photo. So if you want to have a picture converted into an old photo kind of style, you can just click on it and just go ahead and click on OK. So it will convert it into an old style black and white photo with a fuzzy border. And this creates a new image. So the original image is untouched. So I'm going to come here and remove this. We can go back again to decor and this time we can add a fuzzy border. So just go ahead and click on OK. There are parameters that you can change. So this is the colored version of the image having a fuzzy border. And we can go back once again to decor and come here and click on add borders. This is going to add a simple border to the image. And let us say, for example, if I wanted to add a white border or any other border of any other color, like say, for example, yellow, I can easily do that. Create a border around this particular image, you can change the number of pixels, etc. from the dialog. So these are some of the options that are available from Decor. You can try a few others if you want to. Then we have Map category. And this has a few interesting ones. So one of which is Illusion. 
So when you click on this, you will see that it creates an interesting illusion out of this image. And what you can do here is you can choose a different type. So if say, for example, you come here and click on this drop down and choose type two, you are going to have a different preset illusion. And type one is the one that we have seen before. And you can choose the number of divisions. So if you wanted less number of divisions, you can reduce this number and you can have a slightly different kind of picture. And if you wanted to have more number of divisions, you can keep increasing this number. Once you are happy, you can just come here and click on OK and then go ahead and export this image. So I'm going to export this here and export this. When we come to this particular folder where we have saved, you will see that this is the image that we have just created, Map Illusion. And when we try to see it inside our photo viewer, this is how it looks. Very nice. And we can go back again to Map and try to see a few more. And then you can try to look for others as well. So one is Little Planet. And this creates an interesting illusion. So you can then use some of these, like for example, if you wanted a different kind of a spin, you can try that out. So this is an interesting image and for different kinds of photographs, it may have a different effect. In this particular case, because this area has a lot of trees, it's also giving the effect of some kind of depth. So different pictures would turn out very differently. So you can change some of these parameters like zoom in a little bit, or zoom out and so on and so forth. So you can create a very nice picture here. So once you're happy with it, you can say OK and just go ahead and export this particular image. This image is part of the collection inside your folder. And it's been very nicely saved. So there are quite a few filters that you can try via map and you can explore this a little further. So let's check out a few filters from the category render. So for this, I have an image called is wolf. I'm just going to grab hold of it and drop it in the image canvas window here and click on convert. So as you can see, this is a free ranging wolf. So once we have this picture inside GIMP, we can go to filters and then we can go to render and then to pattern. And here you can see there are quite a few filters that you can try out later on. We are going to try an interesting effect that sometimes is required for presentations just to show some kind of puzzle. So we can just come here and click on Jigsaw. And here you have quite a few options that you can try. Number of tiles basically means the number of pieces. If you bring this down, you will see that the number of pieces is less. So we are going to increase this to about eight and eight. So this is going to make it 64 pieces. You can have less number of pieces, say for example, seven sevens of 49. So you can have about 49 pieces. This just depends on you. The second parameter that you can alter is the bevel width. So this basically means the furrows between pieces. So the puzzle can be nicely visible and this will depend on the picture, the contrast of the picture. So different pictures will show the borders between two pieces more clearly or less clearly. And we can also increase the highlight. And here the default is square. You can keep this as curved. So the pieces that you are seeing here, they will become a little curved. Otherwise, they will remain square. So this is your choice. I'm going to click on curved. And let's see how this turns out. So you will see that this is now appearing as a, a jigsaw puzzle. If you are not happy with the thickness of the pieces, you can always come back. So I'm going to head back again to filter, render, pattern, jigsaw. So maybe eight by eight. And just go ahead and click on OK. So once your picture is ready, you can then just simply go ahead and export it. Just like we have done for many other pictures. And we'll save this inside the new images folder and hit export one more time. So when you revert back to your folder, you will see this picture inside that folder. And when you open it inside the viewer, you can see this picture as a jigsaw puzzle. So the last filter that I'm going to demonstrate in this tutorial will help us create an animation 
So I'm going to use this image ship, just grab it and drop it inside the image canvas and press convert. Then we are going to go ahead and go to filters, go right down to animation and then choose spinning globe. There are quite a few other options and you can try them later on. But for this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and click on spinning globe. Now you get a small dialog here and we will not touch the number of frames. We will leave it to the default value of 10. You will notice that this ship is sailing from left to right. So when we create an animation, we want it to turn from left to right. The globe that we are trying to create, the spinning globe, we want it to turn from left to right. If the ship was facing this way and traveling onto this side, we can just simply leave this unchecked. But in this particular case, to give the ship a natural motion, we will have to make sure that we are clicking this one because this ship is moving this way. If it was moving the other way, we would have kept it unchecked. In this case, we will just come here and click on turn from left to right. Now, once you are done, this is also checked work on a copy. So it's not going to impact the original image and we can leave this value as it is. So we are going to go ahead and click on OK and we'll have to be a little patient and let it do its work. So it takes a little time to finish what it's trying to do. And once it is done, it will show us a small globe that is the result of this filter. So this has been done and you can see that it's still working and we can just leave it for a second. And once it is done, this picture is going to change and we will see a small globe here in the image canvas. So that's the globe and you can see 10 frames here. So 10 movement images have been created. And what we can do now is to come here and click on file and then go and export as. Now there are a few things that we have to take care of. And I will just name this as ship. And one of the important things that you have to make sure is that the extension is GIF. It is not JPG. It is not PNG but it is .gif. So once you have done that, you can come and click on export. And this dialogue is also very important. One of the first things that you have to check is this little box here as animation. Now, I just want to point to a few important settings that you can make, and we'll try this a little later on. This setting says that this is the delay between frames when unspecified. So it's already specified how much time is going to wait between one frame and the next or to advance from one frame to the next. If this was unspecified, it will use 100 milliseconds. We can force this by checking this and saying that use delay entered above for all the frames. So irrespective of whatever you have calculated, you will have to use 100 milliseconds to move from one frame to the other and then from that frame to the next and so on and so forth. For this, we are going to just simply go with the default. The only change that we have made on this screen is to make sure that as animation is checked. So we're going to come here and click on export. And this image has now been exported as an animation. So when we reach our folder here, you will see this image that has been saved. Double click on it so you can see the ship moving inside a spinning globe. In fact, the globe is moving and the ship is moving from left to right. It gives the illusion that it is traveling over the ocean. Now, some people might think that this is a little bit fast, so we can control the speed. And let us do this one more time and I'll show you how we can slow this down a little bit. So what I've done is I have reloaded this image once again. I have started afresh and I'm going back and repeating the same process, but with a few different settings. So I'm clicking on filters, then coming on animation and then choosing spinning globe just as I have done before. I can increase the number of frames. So that's going to create a slightly better movement because it will have better transition from one image to the other image, but it might take a little longer time to finish. So let's try this out and I'm going to come here and click on 20. So I'm going to make this into 20 frames. I have already checked turn from left to right and I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. So this is going to take a much longer time than 
what the previous one took because it has to create two times the images that it had before. So you'll have to be a little patient. Once it is done, it'll automatically show you that little globe. So as you can see, the job is done. And we now have twice the number of frames as we had before, starting from 0 to 19. So it is 20 frames. So we can go now and export this file, export as. And this time around, you have to make sure once again that the extension is .gif. We will call this as ship1 or ship slow because we are going to make it slow. Just go ahead and click on export. And we now have to do some work on this screen as well. So in this particular case, um, we have checked as animation. We did this before, so it is continuing here. Here we are going to double this time. Let's make it to 200 milliseconds between frames. So from one frame to the other, this will be 200 milliseconds. And we will force this delay. So we'll make sure that every frame is advanced after 200 milliseconds. So you can play with this number to control the speed. And we'll go ahead and click on export. So just in a very small fraction of a second, this file is written. So once we head back to our folder, you will find that you have this new image, ship slow. And just for comparison, let us first click on the previous one. So I'm just double clicking on it to see it inside the photo viewer. So you can see the speed of the ship that we had created previously with 10 frames. And let's now see what we have done here. This is the latest one with 20 frames and 200 millisecond delay between frames. So just double click on this and you can see that the ship is now sailing much, much more slowly as compared to the previous version. So you can control how fast or slow the image is moving or the globe is moving. And this is how you can create a spinning globe by using the animation filter spinning globe. So let's have a quick look at our saved pictures inside the Windows Photo Viewer. As you can see, we can create wonderful and artistic images very quickly inside GIMP. There are many, many more filters to explore and tinker with and let your creativity fly. I hope this video was helpful to get you started on using filters inside GIMP. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Many thanks for watching.